or should we talk about the Andy's law of solubility? What basically is the basic idea behind uh, Andy's law of solubility? So the argument that Andy made was uh, that the solubility of any given gas is directly proportion to the partial pressure of that gas. So G subscript G is denoting the gas and then K there is denoting the constant. Okay. So the solubility of a gas increases as the partial pressure of that gas increases. That's Andy's law of solubility. And of course earlier I've mentioned that pressure has got a effect on the solubility of a gas but less effect on the solids and liquids. So picture this. Let's assume this is uh, a bottle. <laughs> Don't mind the drawing. And then we have water. Okay. To what level? And then the top part occupied with carbon dioxide. So now assume you begin pumping more of the carbon dioxide into the container. When do you expect that more of the carbon dioxide will be dissolving in the in water? So the way it is, is it? the carbon dioxide that is in contact with water will be able to dissolve into water. Okay, so the more pressure you exert or the more carbon dioxide you add, there will be more pressure, there will be an increase in pressure. So you expect that more carbon dioxide will actually dissolve in water. Of course, there will be a point where no more carbon dioxide can actually dissolve. There will be some carbon dioxide leaving the water as well as dissolving in water. At that point, we refer to that point as an equilibrium point. Okay, but understand that. That is the formula. Solubility increases as you increase the partial pressure of a gas. So of course you know that the partial pressure is like the pressure of a gas in comparison to a total pressure. Okay. So partial pressure can be determined as the more fraction of that gas multiplied by the total pressure in the container. That is in a case where the, you've not been given what? You've not been given the partial pressure. But in most of the cases, for your calculations, the partial pressure will just be equal to the total pressure in that there will be no other gas exerting pressure in a container. Okay? Hopefully you understand what I mean by that. So let's look at a practice question and understand how we basically get to apply Henry's law in terms of performing calculations. So actually in some textbooks, you find that Instead of using S with a subscript G, they can use uh, CG to denote the formula for Henry's law. Okay, let's look at the questions that we have now. So a sentence of drink is bottled so that at 25 degrees Celsius, it contains carbon dioxide. Okay, so... At a pressure of 5 atm over the liquid, okay. Assuming that the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is that, and then calculate the equilibrium concentrations of carbon dioxide in the soda, both before and after the bottle was opened. The end is log constant for carbon dioxide in aqua solutions is that. Okay, so let's take note of the data we've been given. So K is equal to, which is a constant, 3.1 times 10 to the power negative 2 moles per liter. Then the other piece of information we've been given in the question, uh, we've been given the pressure to be 5 atm inside this, the bottle, I believe, 5 atm. So 5 atm, that is before opening. So inside the bottle of that soft drink, we have 5 atm of pressure. So we can call that because we are told to calculate, because the sentence of drink is bottled, so that it contains. So inside the bottle, that is before. 
and then after in the atmosphere after you've opened the pressure will be coming from the atmosphere which is now four okay so let's now try to determine the equilibrium concentrations so the concentrations the equilibrium concentration in other terms is the solubility okay how much of the gas is present in a in what how much of the gas is present in this in the solution is the solubility okay so let's try to perform the calculation the equilibrium concentration is just the same as the solubility so to determine the solubility at these two different partial pressures that is before the bottle was opened before so the solubility of uh, carbon dioxide we can use cg to denote the concentration so the end is constant was 3.1 times 10 to the power negative 2 now i need to mention these also l dot atm there which makes sense actually so that means we have moles and then divided by l dot atm there so if we get to multiply by the by the pressure you notice that the atm will basically gets to go away and then you only mean with more per liter which is a smaller concentration so 3.1 multiplied by 5 of course times 10 to the power negative 2 so we get to have 0 0.155 with the molar concentration there okay so take note of that value before opening and then after opening we need to apply the pressure the atmospheric pressure the atmospheric partial pressure of the carbon dioxide so 3.1 by 10 to the power negative 2 apply by 4 by 10 to the power negative 4 so we get to have 1.24 times 10 to the power negative 5 molar concentration okay so what have you seen so inside the bottle where we had the air partial pressure the concentration was higher outside after opening the bottle the partial pressure of the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere was low which also led to less solubility or less concentration in the solution so that is the conclusion of Henry's law. Just be able to remember that the solubility of the concentration of a gas is directly proportional to the partial pressure of that gas.